All right, my people, we to, we to Pro Max today in Biafra land as the indigenous people of Biafra. Yes, eh, as the Biafra Liberation Army has lost the member, the IPOP has lost the member in hot, fresh attack. Yes, eh, the Prime Minister eh, Simon Eber has also blown hot, has also reacted to this with the uh, immediate effect. All right, my people, without further ado, we'll be going into the details of this news. Remember, we are your one and only Let's Talk TV. All right, uh, tension has uh, risen in Biafra land as another violent confrontation between the security forces, uh, the zoo terrorists, and the Biafra Liberation Army. The indigenous people of Biafra have uh, left uh, its one, uh, several, one dead and several injured. The incident uh, occurred in early hours uh, in the morning and has further heightened and already volatile situation in the region. The latest uh, clash uh, took place in the outskirts of uh, the Biafra land southeast where the, there was reportedly a meeting and there was an attack in that same joint by the rather by the joint tax force of the zoo military and the zoo army and the zoo police units and according to the eyewitnesses the forces ambushed a gathering and uh, this is where they were caught a waffle details still remain unclear it is confirmed that uh, one member has been confirmed dead Yes, killed while others are sustaining injury. The identity of the disease has not yet been released officially, but the death has sent shockwaves to the Biafran community, with uh, many accusing the government of launching a brutal crackdown on peaceful activists. Local pres residents uh, described the scene as a chaotic with gunfire erupting with Without the warning, the um, this one is coming from someone within the area. He said we heard gunshots and saw people running helter skelter, running in every direction. Everyone was scared, and uh, we had witnessed it from witnessed the attack from a distance. In response to the death, uh, the there has been a call for immediate like i said immediate retaliation condemning what they called the state-sponsored terrorism which is what they've been doing right from time it is not a new thing it is not a it is not something that is new one way or another it is something that has been clear right from time the tension has risen all over the place of course, the PM has come out in a fiery broadcast and they has blown hot, lashed out at the zoo authorities and vowed retribution over the death of the member. Eba has uh, gained, Eba, who has gained a full-time reputation for his hardline stance on the Biafra independence, condemned the zoo government for what uh, they did a cowardly and unprovoked attack on his people he has come out and has said that this particular black day will not be forgotten at any point in time uh, but has uh, declared in a live stream which uh, of course is being followed by thousands of his supporters and followers the blood of these fallen heroes will not be in vain the nigerian government must answer for their crimes we will continue to resist this occupation and we will not rest until Biafra is free. Eba's words uh, have further inflamed and caused more reaction. The zoo government has yet to officially make a statement on the latest clash, but sources within the military have defended the action. Of course, that is what they will see as a necessary response to the group. They consider a threat to national security. Well, my people, they consider these people a national threat to national security while there are others. Their own people causing more mayhem than you would 
ever think of in your entire life and they don't they've not seen it they've not looked at it as a as as national security calls <laughs> maybe we should just let you know how far these people are ready to go or how far these people are ready to take whatever it is whenever it comes to anything that looks like it's southeast or Igbo shows how backward they are and how far they would go to do anything thank you i withdraw my question Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, the next person to bring your question is uh, Brother. What's this? Brother. Brother Van Van Van. <laughs> Brother Van Van Van. Oh, yeah, let's hear you. Good evening, sir. Um, good evening, everyone. I want to thank, um, thank you, you for this privilege. Uh, sir, I've been following you closely and I've been um, observing everything you're doing. It has just been falling into place. So, my own is not really a question. It's like an appreciation and also a soft reminder that you should please help us with a continuous update. Because we here, that is what we are feeling. You know, it's not as if we have a, a direct boss we work with or whatever. And you know, in this part of the country, Anything can happen to you. So you have to be very careful, especially with your with your device. So please help us continuously with the updates. As they are making the moves, help us with the updates. And this uh what's it called? This uh the constitution you talked about. Because you know we here, we need to study it also. December second does not assure assure us the fact that uh, everything is going to be rosy, but based on the constitution. And based on the things that will be happening unfolding, we'll be able to trace our steps individually. Because it's the individual effort that will that will collectively bring about what we seek to achieve. That's just what I want to say. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, th thank you very much. All right, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we move, please. I want to encourage us to bring a really demanding, engaging questions, please. Who is opening their mic? Please, um, uh, uh, Ben Farley is on Australia. Let's hear you. Your mic has always remained open. Let's hear you. What do you have to ask? Please go ahead. Australia. Hello, greetings. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Ah, is that uh, Daddy? Please go ahead, sir. <laughs> uh, greetings, everyone. Your Excellency. Uh, I'm just excited on this uh, United Nations Human Rights Treaties that you presented tonight. And um, I just want to say, now we begin to understand why the vice president of Nigeria went to the United Nations and we saw him on the sideline with the president of uh, Finland. And when he got back home, the news media was uh, twisted the whole thing and saying that the reason why he had the president of Finland on the sideline was to uh, ask him to support Nigeria to become members of the uh, United Nations. Um, now, we now see why Nigeria got only two votes. Because the vice president himself that was soliciting for Nigerian membership was himself the leader, the sponsor of the terrorists that is ravaging the whole country. With what you stated and with all these human rights treaties, I could now see the saying that says overtaking is allowed. Today, it has become clear to the world that United States of Biafra has overtaken the zoo called Nigeria. So I just want to 
bring it to the notice of everyone that what RPM have just stated tonight has shown what kind of nation that Biafra is going to be. Overtaking is allowed, my PM, and um, I don't think Nigeria will have anything to say, especially their media, having understood what you share tonight and all these treaties, Nigeria is supposed to be a signatory to, but unfortunately, they ignored because they don't know any better. And uh, upon the violations of these treaties, they think they could bulldoze themselves to becoming members of uh, a permanent, uh, uh, having a permanent seat in the United Nations. So overtaking is allowed. And um, unfortunately, Nigeria has messed themselves up. Kudos, uh, Your Excellency, for leading us and for bringing to the world, you know, showing the world what Biafra indeed is going to be. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Iwunze. Uh, Iwunze is the uh, Biazen uh, officer of the Biafra government in Australia and uh, the representative of uh, the Biafra Pacific in Australia. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, our Daddy, we appreciate you, Daddy Iwunze. Thank you so very much. All right, uh, we move. I uh, please, uh, Chidi Mabia, with me. Let me bring up uh, this uh, person with the same image uh, that is familiar with the image uh, we see as always, um, you know, antagonizing and attacking. I don't know. Uh, okay, let's see, Mayor. I don't know if you the same person that owns this account, but uh, we are happy to have some of you here. The Igbo, there's one Igbo page. We are welcoming all of you. Please come here and ask the Prime Minister questions. I uh, please grab the mic, uh, Mayor, and uh, let your question uh, be precise and make it uh, quick, please. Unmute yourself, Mayor. Mayor, we're giving you the microphone. Unmute yourself and go straight to the point. Mayor, are you ready to ask the question or should we remove you from the speaker? All right, uh, maybe he's scared. They're scared to confirm the Prime Minister. I'll still leave you in the room. When you're ready, you come, come up with that question. Chidema, mm -hmm. please grab the mic until that mayor is ready. Good evening, my PM. Um, our honorable um, Pastor Van 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 <laughs> and the ministers in the house. I'm so excited. I don't know where to start because this is my first time. I'll be trying to enter this space. This is my first time of coming into this space where my PM is addressing issues. I'm very, very excited. And I, I, the question that I wanted to ask, it just seems as if uh, my PM knows what it was in my mind. He treated it because I am part of this uh, uh, religious side that was so deep in me. All these things, when uh, I realized that there is a, 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 a another means of transforming life to god without even preaching what you'll be seeing life from people's way of living just as it is in abroad they don't talk much about bible they don't preach anything but within what they are doing your life will, will tell you that you are doing it right or wrong so you don't need anybody to come and preach gospel to you that is what the the, the diaphragm i'm about to see i don't have a question and i know that a lot of people are waiting to speak so i will not go much further than to say thank you my pm for specifying it because i have a pastor that was like confused she was very distressed about how like we are like are we worshiping human beings it started from our leader because when we used to say nah they can is another savior in all these things sometimes it scared them as if to say that we don't realize that there is god so it's not human being but uh, you have just said everything about this uh, maybe if uh, some people are like being afraid or being uh, confused about are we not noticing God again? And you know you are aware and the, you are aware of our leader Nadikan and your own way. As in, he used to pray like pray, pray, pray. But your own is not. But you do more than we are, we are seeing it in your action. The prayer is in your action. 
even though that our leader used to pray and all this thing, or your own, oh, we are seeing this in your action. Yes, these people are still like they are like still confused somehow, as in, are we worshiping human beings? Are we taking to be our God? Even from my own side, I've seen many times when I do a post, people say, Ah, what well, continue worshiping him? He is your God. I say, We are not what is not nobody is God, and you have specified it today that you are not Jesus, so you don't even reach it. Thank God for this because I'm happy to hear this. So that that this particular this thing we cut off to, to to share to those people that are scared. Even when they say end time, they are like, we this is what we are saying, you know, people will be against Christ. You have specified it by PM, I'm happy. So that was the question that I would have liked to ask. And um, before I go off because of time, I would like to sing this song. <speaking in Spanish> People don't know what we have done in our life because they thought when they are saying kidnapping, uh, catch him, catch him. They don't know that millions of people that we have, not only just our leader, you have sold another, another a seed that is even beyond you that we have not known. But let me be coming, let me be coming down to finalize it by this song. If no move on, my dear Fora, Macana, Bumma, dear Fora, Abuma, dear Fora, dear Fora, Maca. Let me hold this here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chilean. Thank you very much, uh, Chilean. Continue to be coming down. Eh? <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, in addition, in addition to that, uh, I am, I am, you know, I always confess. Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. In case anybody don't understand that, because it really I'm, I'm a I'm child of God. A I'm a child of God, and a Jiran Chineke Gwebu, Jiran Jesus Gwebu. At the same time, I have my, I have my culture. I understand my culture because culture is the way of life of people. So anybody that is doesn't understand his or her culture is a lost person. So I understand my culture. I respect my culture because it is the way of life of our people. So I respect because at the same time, I embrace this so-called foreign God. I love Jesus Christ so much and he is my personal Lord and Savior. It is my own personal business. It is nobody else. I'm not doing it to impress anybody, but I confess Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. At the same time, I value my, my culture. I value Chikuo Kike. I, a lot of people don't even know what the Chikuo Kike in those days in our land we have what we call chico in our compound everybody may run up it is a way to communicate with your own god what how you communicate with your own god is your business so i can even there no 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 thank you thank you our able prime minister we are also honored to have our chief of staff but chief of staff yeah. please bear with me there is this person here that probably have gone to gather some questions and i'm really curious to have um, this uh, face here mayor have you gotten the questions now i'm going to give you the last chance open your mic and let's see if we've got any question for the prime minister all right um good evening i have some questions on there from the sincere question, I will need I will need answers. All right, but make sure you I go start, to the points. Go ahead. Before I start, I will have to say something. Um, please. Uh, there is a guy you called Umo Koko. Um, Rafael, I'm I'm I'm. Please, I'm going to gonna remove you. I'm going to remove you now. If you don't ask your question, he's very unprofessional. Who claims to be representing people to call someone for Koko when you think that person asked a sincere question? Uh, go, please go ahead and ask I, your question. If you, I, you are not doing your question, ask your question. When you, Can you, when you conduct a space, I expect you. Uh, wait. Uh, uh, Raf, Raf, uh, Raf, allow him to allow him to speak. Allow him. Just, right. just yeah, I, I expect you to be more professional. You don't call people who, may, who might be. A bit confused, you call them Umo Koko on a space that maybe there are international people listening. I expect you to be more professional. That's my uh, my advice. Now, this is my question. Um, I have I have been following, and uh, my question goes like this: 
I have seen the, uh, some situation here whereby there is an attack on the military personnel and they invade villages, burning homes and markets, maybe ab abducting innocent youth. I want to know if there are if there are plans. Maybe after the said second of December to make sure that this type of attacks are minimized. This uh, is my first question. Okay, sorry. Before I answer you, can you be specific? Uh, what kind of attack will be minimized? You mean the military burning the villages and the uh, other or abducting our people? Yes. Okay, so yeah, you, you so, about okay, so you will know that the military are burning and abducting our people, right? And your question no. is how what do we do to minimize it? Yes. Do, do, is there any plan? On ground. Okay, all right. Let me let me, uh, of, uh, let me let me let me answer you, please. Uh, everybody stay quiet, please. Yes. No, the the the, 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 uh, the structure is coming from their end, so they are okay. So everybody yeah. stay muted, please. All right. So yes, as a matter of fact, uh, there is a plan, and the plan is what you see today, because the the level of killing by the Nigeria terrorist army that's what addressed them, because that's what they are. Uh, it have reduced drastically compared to what we used to witness in the past. And you can agree with me, no matter how bad you see it today, it was worse in the past. Prior to 2021, we saw worse attack on our land, and immediately the military was kidnapped in 2021, they unleashed mayhem, the worst, you know, massacre of our people and, uh, you know, burning of our properties and villages witnessed from 2021 to 2022 until I pick it up from there and the whole thing begin to reduce. So we begin to make sure we attack them in self-defense. And uh, so attacking them is not something that will you know, reduce the, the, the barbarism overnight. It's something that takes time. And that time it is taken from 2022 to 2023, 2024, you cannot check yourself. Check those places they have been attacking before, check Biafra land yourself and see the differences that we have made today. Today we have reduced the attack to the brims um, to the minimum, and it will continue like that until we make sure we evict all of them from Biafra land as we pursue the international recognition of Biafra. So that's where we are. We may not be able to stop them completely. Even them, they cannot stop. Uh, you know, they are part of the terrorists in, in Nigeria, so they cannot stop every attack against uh, Nigeria indigenous people. So we are going to make sure that we suppress them to the brims, to the minimum. And that's exactly what we are doing. So the, by the day, we reduce their strength until there will be no more. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you very much for that answer. And um, please, I, I, uh, according to my research on uh, the Biafra government in exile, I realized that the legitimacy of a government in exile depends on its local supporters in the grassroots levels. So I have also realized that there are some areas where there is a means of communication. Uh, I have heard, I have heard, I have seen you post, uh, post something like a, a radio, uh, and a, a radio, yeah. So, and I, in the part of Biafra land where I reside, I don't think uh, there are people who know much about what is going on. See, some of them rely on me for some um, information, yeah, which I know few of the information I give them too. So I'm, I'm also asking to know if there are plans to make sure that everybody is carried along, maybe educated in some part of uh, Biafra land to educate them on uh, what to expect after 2nd of December and uh, why 2nd of December is very important. That's exactly, that's exactly, that's exactly what we are doing here. So now if you are one of the channel of their communication, you are in this space. So whatever you learn from this space, I don't know when you join, you can now go and uh, continue your job like that because no government will get everything right. And especially we that are in exile because of the fragile situation in the homeland, we are in exile operating from exile. So not even the the so-called government have any uh, influence in the in the homeland to control the communication or make everybody to be informed of what is going on. 
Many of the things happening, we in exile are the one informing people back home. Many of them don't know when uh, terrorists come to their backyard and kill their neighbors. They don't even know about it. It is us that shares the information to the neighboring villages that are, they have attacked them or they have attacked your neighbor and they will begin to see it on social media. So it is something that uh, takes time and we are making progress in that uh, in that aspect. So if you are the channel of communication to the uh, to the Biafra that are where you are, you just continue that way. Make sure you tell them the truth and tell them what you know. Do not carry propaganda on behalf of the Nigeria government because by the time they find out the truth, you become the enemy. Because they're going to find the truth. They're going to find out the truth one day. So if you are one of those who uh, carry propaganda to them and lie to them, one day they're going to find out the truth, and then you become a bad person, and it may cost your life. You know, you know. Um, I'm saying this because um, you know, not everybody, especially the grandpas in the village, and that not everybody is a uh, is on social media. Yes, so, not every, not uh, not everybody not everybody is on social media. But you know, have yeah. you one have you wondered how Biafra were able to gather almost 30 million votes and 50 million votes and counting? Nigeria government with all their radio and all that, they could not even have up to 25 million votes in Biafra territory. 25 million or 24 million registered votes, only 4 million voted in the general election. The results are there. But look at our grassroots uh, awareness. We have 40 United States of Biafra. In each state, we have 15 counties. This is 15 counties of each state have been occupied by county head, by county head. And in these counties, we have in each county five districts. These five districts have also been occupied by district head. And in this, it means that we are also in the grassroots. So those people that are lacking information are those who are not interested or who are not interested in the Biafra struggle until now. So now they begin to pay some kind of interest because they see the direction where we are going and they are looking for information. And most of them are just looking for the information now. But we have actually captured a great number of Biafra up to 50 million. That's completely A in, a, in, a, in, a, in a examination. It's a pass mark. So we do not expect to capture the entire Biafra territory uh, to make sure we get to every individual. It is impossible, especially at this uh, stage that we are operating. So this particular number we, are, we have we've gotten now so far in the self-referendum is a pass mark to attract international interest and international recognition. And that's all we need. We cannot get everything 100%. You understand what I'm saying? So with what we have done so far, we give credit to ourselves and then push it to the next level, which is now making, making this particular self-referendum, using it to generate this legal document, including the ratification of the, the United Nations, different international human rights laws, make it a legal document and begin to push for international recognition of Biafra. In addition to our seat at home, which every one of you, some of you in those days, have criticized so badly, but we stand on our ground. They say yeah, we are killing people to sit at home. At the end of the day, the same people have come after three years to say, in fact, they have not agreed that their friends are willingly sitting at home. It is a price and sacrifice that they have to make for us to be able to legitimize Nigeria to prove that Nigeria no longer control at least some part of the Biafra territory. It may not be all, but the biggest part of the Biafra territory, Nigeria has no control over them. And that part is the hinterland, the southeast. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, you have one last question, please. One last question. Pick the best question. Okay. okay. The very best one. Pick it and ask it. Just one more question. Uh, let me let me ask one more one, one more uh, one, one more question. Uh, I, there, there was a viral video that um some people we are we are posting. We are yeah we are government. I don't know if it is the Biafra Liberation Army or but let me say they are they were armed men on that video saying if you don't sit at home you will die. So I'm just saying if it is the Biafra Liberation Army that uh, maybe they should be told on how to, on, on they should be controlled on what they say, why on camera, when they go about to enforce the order that is given to them. Because I know that, yeah, some people are uh, looking for loopholes to say this is the criminality or this is what they are doing wrong. So 
advocate for them to be properly disciplined. Thank you. Thank you for your answers. Thank you very much. And I will tell you that uh, that video you see has nothing to do with the Biafra Liberation Army. In fact, as a matter of fact, that video was probably a video of 2021 when we were not even, you know, yet in this whole thing that is happening. So it was a video that was made by the Nigeria government to blackmail the ESN then. It was not even when the Afro Liberation Army was formed. The Afro Liberation Army was unveiled last year uh, during the Finland Convention on the 21st of October, if I'm not mistaken. So it has nothing to do with the Afro Liberation Army and it can never be. And again, like I've just said a few minutes ago, that after three years of propaganda against the Biafra government or against the Biafra liberation, which I am heading, the people that are propagating these uh, lies have come again to say that, oh, they have just come, they have just come to notice that the uh, Biafras are willingly sitting at home, which is the fact, because they have come to understand that Nigeria is not happy with the result of the sit at home. And because they are tired and once Nigeria complain, they understand that it seems like this is really getting to these people. So if this is the only strength and power we have, let us use it judiciously. That's why the Afrans are sitting at home. And if you call for sitting at home for one week, because they have seen how Nigeria have cried for over three years, they are still going to sit at home again. So forget all this, their lies of, uh, oh, they are enforcing it, oh, they are enforcing it. When Martin Amdekan was here, did you not hear his brokers on the on radio Biafra during the time the other sit at home? We have not we have not said um, most of those things. We have not done anything like that. We have not enforced anybody to sit at home. We are fighting to protect our people from getting killed by the Nigeria I mean, Just like you said in the beginning, that how do we stop them from burning the villages and killing our people? These are the people trying to blackmail the Biafra movement, but they failed because they thought that when they bring gun, Simon Ekpa is going to run away. I'm not going to run away. I will still call again another seat at home that will even be worse than what they have seen before, but the time is coming. So it is a price that our people have to pay to delegitimize Nigeria and prove to the world that Nigeria have no control over, over the Biafra people again. That's what, that's what we are gaining because 